because LCIS is diffuse, bilateral and has a risk of developing carcinoma equally bilaterally, the treatment is initially observation, chemo prevention or prophylactic bilateral mastectomy. For non-palpable DCIS, wire localization followed by resection and specimen mammography to confirm completeness of excision is a good option. For limited disease, lumpectomy followed by radiation therapy is adequate. For DCIS more than 4 cm or more than 1 quadrant, mastectomy is the best option. Adjuvant tamoxifen is given if the ER receptors are positive. As far as radiation therapy for DCIS, if the margin of excision of more than 1 cm is negative, there is no need for radiotherapy. If 1 to 10 mm of the margin is positive, one needs to give radiotherapy. For early invasive breast cancer, stage 1, 2A and 2B, if one would compare lumpectomy and radiotherapy versus mastectomy, the disease-free survival rate, the distant disease-free rate and the overall survival rate are the same. But the incidence of ipsilateral recurrence is higher in the group not receiving radiotherapy. Mastectomy and axillary staging on one side and breast conservative therapy with staging of the axilla and radiotherapy on the other side is an equivalent treatment for stage 1 and stage 2 carcinoma of the breast. But breast conservation surgery has a cosmetic advantage and similar survival. This is the reason many people opt for breast conservation surgery. BCS is contraindicated in a patient having BRCA mutation because of the high lifetime risk of developing additional carcinoma of the breast. The relative contraindication against BCS are basically contraindications to radiotherapy such as prior radiotherapy, positive resection margins, multicentric disease and collagen vascular disease. Immediate reconstruction of the breast with a tram or LD flap after oncological resection gives the patient a psychological comfort post-operatively. There is also lesser morbidity and it has an economical advantage. The immediate effect of SLND or wound infection in 1% of patients, axillary seroma in 7% and axillary hematoma in 2% patients. After 6 months, 9% of patients complain of axillary paresthesia whereas 4% of patients complain of decreased range of motion of the upper limb. There is an increase in the arm circumference by more than 2 cm in 7% of the population due to lymphedema. For patients who undergo axillary lymph node dissection, there are more wound infections, more seromas and more paresthesias that have been reported. At the end of one year, 13% of patients report lymphedema with increased arm circumference. Whereas at the end of one year, only 1% in the SLND group have lymphedema with increased arm circumference. This is the reason sentinel lymph node biopsy has replaced axillary lymph node dissection. ALND is done only if the nodes are positive. Adjuvant chemotherapy is given in three conditions. If the tumor size is more than 1 cm, if the nodes are positive, and if the nodes are negative with the tumor size being less than 0.5 cm, only in the presence of adverse prognostic factors such as lymphatic invasion, vascular invasion, high-grade tumor, high nuclear grade, Herceptin 2 receptor positive and ERPR negative. Adjuvant endocrine therapy is given if the ERPR receptors are positive. Either tamoxifen for 5 years or aromatase inhibitors in the case of postmenopausal women for 5 years. For stage 3A and stage 3B locally advanced breast carcinoma even if the CT scan and the PET scan are negative, elevated serum tumor markers may indicate that distant spread has already occurred. In locally advanced breast carcinoma, one would start with the new adjuvant chemotherapy, especially for ER negative tumors. After obtaining the biopsy and the ERPR HER status for LABC, one would work up for metastatic disease. Once the new adjuvant systemic therapy has been started, one would assess clinical response. If there is a complete or partial response, surgical therapy should be undertaken to do the modified radical mastectomy followed by adjuvant therapy and follow-up. If there is no response to the therapy, 
one would consider alternative systemic chemotherapy and individualize the local regional therapy in the form of toilet mastectomy. If the internal mammary nodes are positive, one would give systemic chemotherapy and radiotherapy. For stage 4 cases, which are ER positive, having bone, soft tissue and visceral metastasis, one would start with endocrine therapy because it is associated with least toxicity. For pleural effusions, if settled by percutaneous drainage, continue the endocrine therapy. But if there is lymphangiotic spread, start chemotherapy along with endocrine therapy for the ER positive cases. For tumors which are ER negative and refractory to hormonal treatments with visceral crisis, one should start with chemotherapy. One should individualize the surgery or radiotherapy for cases with CNS metastasis, pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, biliary obstruction due to lymph nodes, ureteral obstruction, long bone fractures and spinal cord compression. Specifically for bone metastasis, one can use biphosphonates in combination with chemotherapy and endocrine therapy. Toilet mastectomy is used for local regional control. If a local regional recurrence occurs in a woman who has had a mastectomy, one should start with surgical resection and reconstruction if necessary, followed by chemotherapy, radiotherapy and endocrine therapy. If a local recurrence occurs in a woman who has already had a lumpectomy, remember that she has already had radiation. Therefore, mastectomy and reconstruction are performed and chemotherapy and endocrine therapy are considered.